Shoulder replacement surgery has been performed for the last uh, 35 years very successfully. And as long as a patient has an intact uh, functioning rotator cuff, it can be an extremely successful procedure. However, there is a group of patients who not only have arthritis in their shoulder, but they also can have a severely torn rotator cuff. And the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that run from the shoulder blade to the upper arm, and they allow patients to elevate their arm. If a patient does not have an intact or functioning rotator cuff, then a shoulder replacement surgery will not be successful. In order to describe a reverse shoulder replacement, we'll take a look first at the model of the primary shoulder replacement. And what's, what's not shown on the model here is that there are a group of muscles that are running from the shoulder blade to the top of the arm that allow you to elevate your arm. If those muscles are not present, such as a bad or severe rotator cuff tear, and you do a primary total shoulder replacement, this ball will just be pulled vertically and it will not allow you to elevate your arm because of the lack of rotator cuff. And up until um, approximately 2004 in this country, we had no good option for patients with arthritis and a severe rotator cuff tear. However, in Europe, for approximately 20 years, they've been using uh, a different type of operation that is known as a reverse shoulder replacement for those patients who have arthritis and rotator cuff tears. The reverse replacement was approved for use in this country by the FDA in 2004, and thus we've been able to use this operation very successfully for this type of patient. So this is a model of a reverse shoulder replacement, and what you can see is that the ball has now been placed in the socket, which is this metal ball here, and the socket has been placed in the upper arm, and these can then mechanically fit together, and this is known as a reverse shoulder replacement. The advantage of this construct is that even though there's no rotator cuff, when the deltoid muscle pulls on the arm, because this is now constrained in this nature, the arm can elevate. So with a reverse replacement, the deltoid muscle actually takes over the job of elevating your arm which it cannot do unless a reverse replacement has been put in place. Reverse shoulder replacement requires usually two days in the hospital. And it's an operation that's performed through a fairly small incision, approximately three to four inches in length. The surgery itself takes approximately two hours, and patients leave the hospital with a sling, but are undergoing exercises, mostly on their own for the first few weeks, to reestablish range of motion of the joint. Once, they re once they're out of the sling and three to four months after the surgery, they're beginning to resume activities of daily living. And most patients are able to regain the ability to raise their arm overhead between four and eight weeks after the surgery. Patients who need reverse shoulder replacements typically cannot raise their arm even to the horizontal, and many patients significantly less. The tremendous gain achieved by having a reverse replacement and regaining the ability to lift one's arm is a huge success for these patients and they're really very, very gratified with the operation.